Hey everyone, and welcome back to Der Mall Walking. In 2019, filmmakers Bradford Thomason and Brett Whitcomb spent several weeks documenting life in Jasper Mall, in Jasper, Alabama. They introduced us to a cast of characters, the most memorable of which being Mike, long lost cousin of the Tiger King, and allowed us to spend some time in their world. I don't need to tell any of you that things have changed in the past few years. Covid, supply chain issues, and of course, the looming threat of nuclear war. But what about Jasper Mall? How has that changed? When passing through Alabama on a recent trip, I visited to find out. Let me start by talking about the mall itself. I visited on a weekday morning, just before lunchtime, and the place was eerily quiet. The mall had no music playing. Everything in this video has been added in post. So the only sounds were that beautiful fountain, which we saw at the beginning of the video, and the squeaking footsteps of mall walkers and the occasional customer making their way around the mall. But these folks were few and far between. I encountered maybe 10 or 15 people the whole time I was in there, including one very familiar face I'll get to a little later. While some empty malls feel creepy or sketchy, that's not the vibe I got from Jasper Mall at all. It felt oddly familiar, which makes sense as I've watched a documentary a few times, but also very peaceful. I've often made the joke that my version of heaven is a dead mall, and this place is about as close as I've gotten to that feeling. If I didn't have another 200 miles to drive, I could have probably spent all day here. When the credits roll on a documentary that I've enjoyed, I always feel a pang of sadness. Jasper Mall offers a fascinating, often poignant glimpse into the world of those who orbit the mall. But when the movie's over, so is our time with those people. Yes, you can sometimes do some digging and follow the quote-unquote stars of reality TV on Instagram or Twitter, but that doesn't apply here. The Jasper Mall movie Instagram account hasn't posted since 2020, and neither the mall itself nor Mike have a presence on Instagram or Twitter as far as I can tell. So if you're hungry for more Jasper Mall, your only real options are videos like this one, or to take a road trip out there yourself. Which I highly recommend, by the way. If it isn't clear already, Jasper Mall is still struggling. According to Wikipedia, it currently has 10 non-anchor tenants. Their official website store directory lists closer to 30, although we know for a fact that some of those have now closed. I put the true figure somewhere in between the two. And crucially, with the exception of Garfield's Pub and Restaurant, a Chinese restaurant adjoining the mall, and Yogurt Street, the mall still has no food court since the departure of Subway. In the Jasper Mall documentary, Mike was hoping to find new anchors to fill the spaces left vacant by the departures of Kmart and JC Penney. Although the Kmart space, which we're closing in on now, remains empty, a Dunham Sports now fills one vacant anchor space. Disappointingly though, it has no internal door to the mall, so the store doesn't really encourage any additional foot traffic through it. Still, it has to be better than the space sitting empty. I did toy with the idea of picking up a t-shirt repping the Jasper Vikings, the local high school football team, while I was in there. Which would probably be almost impossible to explain to anyone in the UK. But sadly, they didn't have my size. Que sera sera. I couldn't resist knocking on the door of the mall security office under the pretense of asking a question about the public Wi-Fi to see if I could catch up with Mike. Then there he was, from the mullet and security t-shirt right down to the camo cargo pants. 
He gave me some advice about the best spots in the mall to jump on the Wi-Fi before I broached the subject of the documentary. The documentary, he said, as if he'd momentarily forgotten about it. Gotta take a brief pause to acknowledge this great old-school Bath and Body Works on the right. Oh right, sure, he said. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, and that you came out to visit us. Definitely no ego here. Do you mind if I grab a quick selfie with you? I asked Mike. What's a selfie? He replied. When I explained that it was a picture, he said sure and leaned in. On the count of three, say good day, he quipped. That answers my next question then, I said. You are Australian, not South African. Yes sir, that's right, he laughed. I thanked him again, and then he disappeared to handle some pressing issue or other, of which there seems to be no shortage in Jasper Mall. The presence of Belk, which we're coming up on now, is undoubtedly one of the reasons that Jasper Mall persists, and it was difficult to tell on a weekday morning, but I suspect that the presence of a children's play zone and the worship life Jasper Church, who moved into the mall at the end of 2020, has been helpful too. At the beginning of this video, I posed the question, how has Jasper Mall changed in the past few years? The answer I got when I visited is that, well, in many ways it hasn't. In the documentary, Mike says that I left a zoo and now I'm in a jungle, and I imagine that he still feels that way in 2022. But through it all, the mall soldiers on. Which is more than can be said for some iconic dead malls, like Tri-County Mall, which had just closed its doors when I started work on this video. And hey, GNC is still here, and so is Bath & Body Works. Even if Subway is long gone. Thank you for watching this video. Please consider leaving a like if you enjoyed it. My Instagram and Patreon, and some other ways to support the channel, are linked below. Until next time, goodbye from Jasper Mall.